guys, it's JDL, and today we're rebuilding the Memphis Grizzlies, and bro, the poor Grizzlies, bo, they are just injured. John Morant, dislocated right shoulder. Brandon Clark has a sore right ankle, but man is coming off an Achilles rupture. Steven Adams, right knee surgery, destroyed his PCL. Desmond Bain in real life actually sprained his ankle. He's not listed as injured in 2K. I guess they're a bit behind, and Marcus Smart has an injured finger. So this team is just having like the season from hell. 14 to 25 on start today, but in real life, they won this game against the Warriors. Let's see what happens. All right, we take the L. You know what? That's fine. This team is actually in a great position to just try to get healthy. So we're just going to simulate this whole, you know, 2024 NBA season, get to the off season. That's where this rebuild is really going to start for this Memphis Grizzlies team. We finished 31 and 51. That's the fifth worst record in the NBA. So we're gonna have a pretty good shot at getting a great draft pick here, which is awesome. Cause I feel like our team's already stacked. So while we're, you know, just glamorizing, thinking about the future, we'll see who wins the chip. And the winner is the Knicks. So Knicks are the champions. That's an interesting one. Okay, so this draft lottery right here is honestly gonna determine if we have a relatively easy rebuild or a relatively hard rebuild. And we end up with the number one pick. Oh my God, which is crazy. That can happen in real life. So right now the Grizzlies in real life have a 37% chance to get a top four pick in the draft. We just did that. Wow, this pick is everything. So that's a crazy thing. We have one trade offer. I guess we'll take a look at it. Shen Goon. I mean, I'd love Shen Goon, but honestly, I feel like Jaren's already our go-to big. I don't really want another one. I like having a more defensive rebounding type big like an Adams. So we need a small forward. This guy's a 6'9", two guard. Everyone has him number one. We're just going to take him. If you guys are wondering why I don't use the fan-made draft classes, it's because they always overrate the heck out of people. I feel like people don't really understand how to like do two ratings properly. Just as an example, Desmond Bain has an 88 three-point shot. Most of the Victor Wembanyama draft classes in last year's 2K gave Victor like an 86-3, which is just, Victor is not that good of a shooter. All right, so we've got our number one pick, a big two guard. There's a guard from Baylor who is a sharpshooter that in this draft class that might fall to Memphis in real life. So this actually could be kind of what happens. We're going to decline the team option on Luke Kennard. This guy just doesn't get any run for us. We're going to keep Roddy and LaRavia, just cheap contracts fill out the roster. GG Jackson, this guy's a 65 overall right now. Now, this dude's been hooping in real life for the last week, but I mean, in the game, man's a 65 overall. For some reason, he is outraged. Hey, GG, I'm gonna offer you the qualifying. I mean, you don't have to take it, my guy, but I don't know why you're outraged, bro. So we're in a great spot because there's no one I really need to bring back in free agency. The problem is I just don't really have money to bring anyone else on. Assuming our rookie's not gonna make a big impact, I'm gonna try to sign Gordon Hayward. Obviously, Hayward gets hurt a lot, but I feel like he would slot in really nice on this team, even though defensively he's diminished. So. Gordon Hayward agrees to join my Grizzlies. And Willie Hernan Gomez, I'm gonna try to bring this guy on on a minimum deal, play backup center for me. Gigi Jackson wants to run it with the Knicks for one year. All right, yeah, and I'll sign Willie. Okay, sounds good. So I'm a little worried about the big men. Adams is a 76 overall. Clark, you know, he's a 77, but he's 27 years old. He probably won't get too much better. So we might have to look to move to get a better center. The problem is Smart's kind of my big trade chip, but I don't know if I really wanna trade Marcus Smart because I won't have a back up guard. So right now I've got John Morant, Desmond Bain, our rookie, Jaron Jackson, and Clark. Ah, I think I'm going to start Adams over Clark. I mean, we also have Aldama. This guy's listed at seven foot, but he's a forward. He's not a great, great shooter, Aldama. He could definitely be a better shooter. So it's a little tough because right now I feel like we need to maybe just make one sort of trade and try to pick up like a guy who can maybe just be a little bit more impactful for us. Like I would love to get a different center. Don't want to trade Steven. He's on the last year of this $12 million deal. So we might just keep him around. Zyra Williams isn't expiring. I feel like the way I've structured the roster, I don't know if I'm gonna get a lot of run for him and how big of an extension I wanna give him. So let's take a look at this. So the Grizzlies are willing to do a smart for Capella trade straight up. Now the guy I drafted actually has guard skills. So he could play kind of without jaw in that bench unit to help supplant smart. So I'm gonna do this trade. So I've got a starting lineup now of John Morant, Desmond Bain, Gibson, Jaron Jackson, and Capella. So I've got a nice dive big man around a John Morant pick and roll. I've got shooters on the outside. This team should be pretty good defensively. I like our bench, but now that I've traded smart, I'm missing a guard. So we're going to have to figure that out, but I'm just going to see how the team does it first. Let's go to Christmas. See if we get a good Christmas gift of a great record here in the regular season. We barely beat the Spurs, but we beat the defending champion Knicks. So I think we're off to a good start here. We'll see you guys on Christmas day. 
So on Christmas Day, we're 26 and five, bro. We are probably the best team in the NBA. We have the best record by a mile in the West. We have the second best defense and we have the second best offense in the conference. So I will definitely take that. So do I need to make any changes with this team? I honestly don't think I do. I mean, basically the whole team is dominating right now. So like we're at a pretty good spot. Our rookie is averaging almost 18 a game. Jaws over 30 a game. Bane's at almost 20 a game. All right, I guess we'll go to the trade deadline then and just see if we have a little bit of turbulence or not. I mean, I feel like the thing that's really nice about the Memphis Grizzlies is really all they need to do is get healthy. Because even last season when they lost in the first round of the Lakers, they were not healthy. They were missing Steven Adams. They were missing Brandon Clark. John Morant, I don't know if you guys remember, had that awful hand injury. So he still balled out. So I don't know if the hand injury mattered, but he had it. <laughs> So we ended up kind of sucking since Christmas. Uh, we went from 26 and five, 25 and five to 37 and 14. That's like a 12 and seven run. A lot of L's here. Still number one in the conference, but not by as much as we were before. It's kind of tough. I feel like we could make a trade because right now we're in a position where I think our starters are going to get better going into next year because they're still young, but Hayward is definitely going to decline. But I mean, we have a lot of guys coming up behind Hayward who could take that burn off of him. Adams, we're probably going to lose in free agency, but I don't know. I guess we kind of run it with this team. This team is not so bad. I'll try Gigi Jackson just because I think he's still pissed off for some reason. Oh no, he's fine. Now he's fine. You know what though? He's already up to a 70 overall. He was a 65 last year. We're going to keep him. So we're going to roll up the team we have. I like the team we have. Even though I think we could get something for Steven Adams. You know what? Steven Adams is great vibes. I'd love to see him win a championship. And I feel like we could win a championship this year. Hey, my faith has been rewarded. We are 4-0 since the trade deadline. 5-0 since the trade deadline. 6-0 since the trade deadline. 7-0. Oh, okay, 7-1. Okay, we'll take it. We'll take it. I'll see you guys at the end of the season. Jokic is the MVP, our boy Ronald Gibson. He's the rookie of the year. Somehow our boy shot 44% from the three point line and only 72% from the foul line. Our boy Ja Morant made the all NBA first team, 30 points, seven boards, nine and a half assists. I like the sound of that, okay. And we are the number one seed, let's go. So we're playing the New Orleans Pelicans. Now, I kind of like this matchup for us. I mean, they're starting Bull Bull at center. I guess the one thing this team is really missing is a true lockdown wing. I don't have a player with like a 95 perimeter defense, which I'd love to have in a matchup like this so I could put him on Brandon Ingram. But I mean, Jaron versus Zion, I feel like that works out for us, even though Zion's an absolute stud. I feel pretty good about this series. Yeah, John Moran only has a 75 perimeter defense. That's a little tough. Bain is an 82. Oh my God, our rookie has 90 perimeter defense. Hello. Against the Pelicans, you got to protect the paint. I feel like, you know, Pelicans are an eight seed. You'd think we were going to sweep them, but knowing 2K, you never know. Oh, we do sweep them. All right, sweet. Round two, we We've got the Dallas Mavericks. Okay, this is a really interesting Mavericks team. It's Luka, Kyrie, Dante Exum. Draymond Green is playing the four for this team and they've got Derek Lively. This is a really, really weird Mavericks team. Okay, we're gonna have to make some adjustments here. Our rookie is gonna be guarding Luka. That is a scary sentence, but it is what it is. Desmond Bain on Kyrie. John Morant on Dante Exum. All right, I feel like this is a tough series with Luka, but you know what? I like our odds. We win game one by six points. All right, John Morant. 9 of 26. That is ugly. But Luca was 8 of 23. All right, so we survived game one. We win game two by like 37 points. Oh my gosh. All right, we win game three. We might go undefeated in the playoffs. There we go. Now we've got OKC. This is another really, really good team. Oh man, the Thunder are good, man. I don't know. I'm overselling us a little bit. The Thunder are really, really good. I mean, these two teams, the Timberwolves, are probably the best three young teams, especially in the West. So Bro, I'm the best coach of all time, though. I'm the best coach of all time, man. Ronald going up against Shay Shay. Giddy has an A3 point? Bro, since when? Damn, J-Dub is good too, bro. This team is actually really solid. I don't know how this series is gonna go, honestly. Here we go, game one. They beat us in game one, so we don't go undefeated. We take game two, so now we're headed to OKC. They beat us in game three in OKC. They beat us in game four. All right, we force a game six. This is an OKC, I'm pretty sure. And oh, not a good first quarter for us, but we have a really strong second quarter. Come on, guys, come on, come on. Oh my God, it's super tight here. Here. I feel like if we can get it to a game seven in Memphis, we can win. It's just going to be really hard to win this on the road, but it looks like we're pulling away here in game six. We were the best team all season and we're the best team here in the playoffs. I say that as we still have a game seven to go. All right, here we go. At home, that first quarter was embarrassing. What happened, bro? Gordon Hayward scored 10 points. Bro, it doesn't even look like we shot the ball that badly. Gibson was not very good. He's a rookie. Wow, bro. What happened this first quarter? We need to have a crazy second quarter. We win the second quarter. We win the third quarter. 
quarter. Okay, it's now a three-point game. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, come on. We're pulling away here in the fourth. Let's get it. Let's get it. Okay, we absolutely dominated the fourth quarter. We dominated the rest of the game, even though we got embarrassed in the first quarter. <gasps> oh, wait, it's still close. Okay, no, we're gonna win. We're gonna win. We're gonna win. Blah, 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 blah. John Morant, your conference finals MVP. 28 points. And Evan Mobley won it in the East. Okay. I like this matchup versus the Cavs, assuming they have the same team. Darius Garland, Donovan Mitchell, Kelly Oubre. That's a great pickup for them. Evan Mobley and Jared Allen. So, I mean, the thing with this Cavaliers team is like, you don't got to respect the big shooting. The problem is all those three other guys can shoot pretty well. So spacing is a little unique for this Cavs team because it's like two complete non-shooters and three pretty good shooters. All right. Ain't nothing Coach Jidel can't whip up, bro. Nothing I can't fix. Donovan Mitchell. This guy is like the textbook definition of a stud. Garland, you're going to be guarded by Bain. Evan Mobley, you're going to be guarded by Jaron. Here we go. The NBA Finals versus the Cleveland Cavaliers. And we take game one. They take game two. We're going to Cleveland now. We take game three in Cleveland. We take game four in Cleveland. And I believe that is the chip. All right. Memphis Grizzlies are the champions, baby. 26 points for Jaw, eight rebounds, 10 assists. It's crazy. I feel like the number one thing the Grizzlies need to get a proper rebuild is just a really good doctor to make sure these guys stop getting hurt. Okay. Bandwagoning it up. You know, Memphis is the champions. I've been a Memphis fan. So here we go. Let's just see it. Like, I think this team has the potential to go back to back. I think the Grizzlies in real life have done a really good job of building this roster. So let's take a look at like how back to back would look for this team. All right. So I'm going to accept the team option on David Roddy and Jake LaRavia. Roddy's actually up to a high enough rating where I might actually give him some run next year, especially if Hayward declines. Qualifying offer to Zyra Williams, Gigi Jackson, who's now enthused. Let's go, Gigi. I don't know if you're going to play for me yet, but you're enthused. I mean, it's going to be tough salary cap wise for a small market team. I don't know how deep Memphis would want to go into the luxury tax to bring back, you know, all these guys. Adams probably won't play for me next year. That 77 overall is definitely going to go skyrocketing down and I got to bring Capella back. So it's contract extension season. Here we go. Starting with Capella, got to bring him back. He's 31. Let's do a little three-year deal. Zyra Williams, he's definitely going to be in the rotation more this year. A little three-year deal for 15 per. Aldama already was in the rotation, is in real life too. Three-year deal. Boom, I get everyone to come back. And I mean, the team is looking really, really good. I know Hayward declined, but you know, we've got the young guys coming in to supplant him. I mean, this team is in a really, really good spot. Honestly, I feel like I could move on from Roddy just because like I already got Zyra Williams and my boy Gibson starting. So here in year two, officially the same starting lineup, John Morant, Desmond Bain, Gibson, Jaron Jackson, and Capella. I mean, if the Grizzlies are able to find a three guy that can shoot and play really good perimeter defense, like this team is already built. They're built. So this is a really good starting lineup. The bench, we still have Clark, who's been a great bench guy his whole career. Zyra Williams, you know, growing into this role. Aldama, who's already there. Roddy, I mean, right now I don't have a backup big. I have like four forwards. So we're gonna have to make one quick change to make this work. Sorry, big Roddy with the body. You're a little short. I don't know how I feel about you. So I can give up three forwards, honestly, two of which are not even playing to pick up Nurkic. I mean, this is a great trade for both teams. The Suns just need talent, but they're gonna miss out on having a center. But I love Nurkic coming off the bench for us. This is a great trade. Or I get this heat trade where I get Jovic and Daniel Gafford. I actually like this one a bit more, getting Jovic back. So we're gonna do this. I've got Gafford, Clark, Zaire Williams, Aldama, and Jovic off the bench. Jovic has some guard skills. He can kind of play like a little bit more point forwardy. I know the assist total doesn't suggest that, but I might be missing some passing on the bench. I might be lying to myself right now. Let's be real. I might be lying to myself. So maybe I try to get a guard. But the nice thing about this rotation is I've got Morant and Gibson, both of which you can play make. Desmond Bain is a no subpar playmaker in my opinion, but you know what? We just won the title with this team, with this kind of team construction. Let's go again. We're just going to simulate the whole season. We're not going to make any trades unless the team is like falling apart, which I really don't see happening here. So I'll see you guys in the playoffs. Okay, so John Morant wins the MVP here in this season. 32 points, six rebounds, almost 11 assists. That's an incredible stat line. Of course, he makes the first team, but that's it for us on the All-NBA team side of things. We are the number one seed. We actually had a better record than last year, 65 and 17, but it looks like we have another date with the Thunder in the conference finals. And look at these point differentials. We were at 11, they were at 10.6. So we are basically just completely even teams. Little scared of them. And I'm also scared of the Denver Nuggets, man. Why are we playing the Denver Nuggets here in the first round. How is the team with Nikola Jokic this bad? Well, I mean, look at those guards. McConnell and Rozier. I know McConnell's a good defender, but like, these are some tiny boys. We're gonna, that, that sounded really creepy. Let's, uh, all right. Yeah, this is a small backcourt. That was a better way to put it. All right, it's game plan. You know what? Actually, do I need a game plan? They're the eighth seed. I'm gonna risk it for the biscuit, baby. All right, six game series. It's Jokic. That makes sense. Now we've got a five seeded Portland Trailblazers team. Scoot Henderson, Shaden Sharp, Michael Porter Jr., Jabari Walker, and DeAndre Ayton. I feel like this is another team I 
I don't know if I need a game plan for. Yes, okay, we're good. And we have Boyd the Thunder who lost 4-1 in the first round. So we kind of luck out because this Pelicans team, we swept them last year, but they've upgraded. They've got Austin Reeves, but I feel like we should, honestly, I already have a game plan for this team. You know, Austin Reeves doesn't really change too much for me here. So I'm gonna simulate. We sweep them again and we go back to the NBA Finals. The Washington Wizards are in the NBA Finals. What the heck is going on? Jamal Murray, Koulibaly. I actually like Koulibaly a lot. Avia, Kuzma, and this team is awful. This Wizards team, they beat the Bulls 4-2 in the first round. Okay, so they beat a Kyrie Irving Bulls team. Then they go to Atlanta. They beat like the Atlanta Hawks. This is basically like the real life Hawks with Franz Wagner. I don't get how they beat this team, but you know what? Jamal Murray's a stud. I think Jamal Murray's really, really good. Then they play a one-seeded Raptors team. Wow, they had an, I'm not gonna lie, bro. The Eastern Conference was trash this year. Look at the teams they played. These are not championship quality teams. Like how did the Sixers not win the conference? Where are the Celtics? How did this Celtics team not make the playoffs? They didn't even make the play-in. Bro, they went 30 and 52. You know what? We're in the NBA Finals. This Wizards team, clearly they've got some magic mojo going on. So we're gonna make an actual game plan because this team demands your respect, I guess. All right, NBA Finals, here we go. And we win 4-1. Okay, we are the champions. That second year, I don't even know if that really counts, bro. We had the easiest path to the finals I've ever seen. But that is my rebuild of the Memphis Grizzlies, guys. Back-to-back -back chips in our two full seasons with the team. I think the Grizzlies are really set up for success. I'm really excited to see what they do this offseason, what they do next season. In real life, I feel like Adams is going to come back a little bit better than his 2K rating indicated. So I don't know if they're going to need to trade Marcus Smart. I kind of like keeping Marcus Smart as a six man and just seeing how the team does for this team in real life. Especially if they do really good in the draft lottery and they get like a top four pick. They could either trade that for the small forward they need or maybe pick up a guy in the draft like a Jacoby Walter Alter I don't remember his last name but he's a shooter from Baylor there's like a Nikola Topic but he's more of a guard but he does have size so there's options in this draft maybe this is supposed to be a weak draft in real life but Grizzlies have a lot of different ways they can go about it I really like the core of Morant Bain and Jaren so I'm excited to see what the Grizzlies do next season and I really do think they have a chance to win it within the next three seasons so if you guys enjoyed this video we had a full podcast discussion about the Memphis Grizzlies on my podcast Pal Trump podcast link below in the description I'll see you guys in the next one peace